blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Christ is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah.
in Idahosa. He came, he saw, and he conquered. He's going to be with people. Take your Bible tonight. We are going to be here for exactly one hour Bible study. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. Say that, everybody. I didn't hear you. Hearing by the word of God. Say it. Please respond. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What subject I want to handle tonight will help you if you follow step by step, precept by precept. Because I have found that all over the world, everyone is looking for who to pray for him, for healing, to pray for you for miracle, pray for you for deliverance, pray for you for blessing. By the teaching of tonight, you will find what your part is in the ministry. Whether you are a pastor, a layman, a member of the church, in the choir, whatever you desire to become in life is possible. Somebody say hallelujah. We we'll start from Acts chapter 17, the 17th chapter, the 26th verse. I want to talk to of the originality of you and creation as one people. Then we go to God's part concerning our lives. We want to talk of sickness. Where does it come from? Diseases, where do they come from? The healing, who owns it? God's part in our healing, Jesus' part in our healing, the apostles' part in healing, and your part in healing. Three parts tonight. Verse 26 of Acts 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. And God had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations. God has made all men, all nations of men made of one blood. Now look at verse 27. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Say that to your neighbor. God is not far from you. Please say it loud. I want you to say it very loud. This man knows that God is not far from him. This one knows that God is not far from him. Dr. Peter knows God is not far from him. Now, if God is not far from any one of us, say us, us. loud, us. louder, us. us, attack it, us. loud, us. us. Now say to yourself, God, God. is not, not far from me. me. Say me, me. Not, not far, far. from far. Me. me. I didn't hear you. God is not far from me. One more time. God is not far from me. You believe that? If it is true he's not far from you, why do you borrow other people's gift as against you using your gift? We want to find out. If it is true God is not far. When I found out that Jesus said, feed, I told them in Australia in my opening message, when I heard Jesus say, feed the hungry, I choose to be the one feeding the hungry than to be the hungry. Somebody should hear what I'm saying tonight. When I heard him say, clothe the naked, I told God, I remove myself from the naked. Give me enough clothes to clothe the naked. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying tonight. When I heard God say, Heal the sick. I said, God, I have choice. I either be the sick to be healed, or I become a healer of the sick. I have to choose. 
Clothe the naked. Lord, I resign from nakedness. I am going to clothe the naked. Feed the hungry. I choose to feed than to be fed. Heal the sick. I choose to heal than to be healed. Now this day you know that you have the ability that Christ has given you, vested on you, to help. You will not be in the need of help. When you discover that you are supposed to feed the hungry, you will not stand by the roadside to beg for food. And by the time you discover that, you were the one that the Bible says, if the spirit that dwells in Christ dwells in you, he quickens your mortal body. You become the one looking for the sick to heal, rather than coming every time, making beggary of your life in the church. It is not wrong to pray for one another, but it is wrong to become professional pray for me, man. If I offend you tonight, I will affect you. I'll be very happy to offend you. It is wrong for you to always, I need prayer. Wear my head. That's for Monday. I need prayer Tuesday. Wear ears. On Wednesday, wear mouth. On Thursday, chest. On, sat on Friday, belly. On Saturday, waist. On Sunday, leg. When will you hear God say, rise and shine? Somebody say now. now. Say it again. Now. Okay, look at the 28th verse. The 28th verse. For in him we live, say that loud, and move, and have, have been, a certain also of your own point, have said, for we are also his offspring. Somebody say offspring. Look at verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Between this verse 30 says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to change their mind. Repent. Turn from I'm weak, I'm tired, I'm bruised, I'm wounded, I'm broken down, I'm lazy, I'm sick, I'm poor. Take all the I'm negatives of your life and possibilitize yourself. You are too negative. I'm a Christian. That's why I'm poor. It is wrong. You are not poor because you are a Christian. You are poor because of your unbelief. I'm a Christian. That's why I have no good job. It's not because you are a Christian. You have no good job. It's because you are lazy. I'm sick because I'm a child of God. I'm not sick because you are a child of God. You are sick because you don't believe in healing. If you believe in healing, by his stripes, we are healed. Someone say amen. amen. Come on, choir conductress. Come here. I saw two of you conducting tonight. <laughs> you didn't know that I knew that. All right. I saw you and the baby conducting. Now, in him, in you, she lives. In you, he moves. That's two of them. <laughs> All right. In you, he has his being. In you, she moves. In you, he lives. In you, she has her being and his being. Whosoever is there. Now, how much does this baby pay you to stay there? Nothing. When was the last time this child paid rent? <laughs> Never. <laughs> How much did your husband charge you for letting the baby stay there? Nothing. What is the baby going to pay you when the baby is born? Nothing. Nothing. Is there any baby there? Moving? Living? Having a being? All right. Now in Christ, in him, as this baby is in you, that is how the Bible says you are in God. Do you... Does the baby pay you to leave? No. Do you take care of the baby? Yes. If you dwell in God as this baby is dwelling in you, just as you don't pay, the baby doesn't pay to stay there. That is how you shouldn't pay to stay in Christ. Are you well? Yes. 
Yes. Is the baby well? Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. As long as this mother is well, baby will be well. As long as this woman is well nourished, the child inside medically will be well nourished. When this baby, when this woman moves, the baby moves. When this woman lies down, the baby lies down. In Christ, we are his offspring. We came from him, we live by him, we stay by him, we are in existence and living to his ability and capacity of possessing us. Somebody say amen. amen. For nine months, this baby will pay no rent. And when this child is born, the mother doesn't say, Well, thank God you came out at last. Boom, bam. She's not going to do that. She's going to say, Hallelujah. This is my replica. This is one from me, like me. That is what God does when we are born again through the blood shed at the cross of Calvary. We are Christ's offspring. When we are inside him, he takes care of us. When we come out, he takes care of us. I saw a young man tonight called Michael. We stay in the same house. He has a father. Huh? Matthew, yes. Matthew has a father. His father's name is Reed. He's all as a father, but he doesn't pay for his food. <laughs> Matthew's as tall as a father. He still takes food free. Why? He stays in his father's house. There's another girl, lady called Sarah. She doesn't pay rent. Why? She's in her mother's house. God bless you. <laughs> Do you understand where we are coming from? Offspring. Offspring. Come on, Matthew, come here quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Stand here. Dr. Mike, come up. Carbon copy. Offspring. <laughs> Offspring. Thank you, sir. Sit down, sir. Brother Matthew, when we close tonight, where are you going from here? Home. Home. You shouldn't talk of home. Where is home? Over there. <laughs> How much do you pay? About 100 quid a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. How many years have you known the Reeds? About 23. About 23 years. Have they been able to meet some of your needs? A few. <laughs> well, a few. Somebody say a few. Someone say a few. And God missed some of my needs too. I can testify from the read that I know the need he has not met for him is the one he didn't ask for. I can testify of that. You have a car. I saw you driving tonight. You bought it with your salary. I'm buying it. You are buying it. <laughs> have you paid yet? No. Are you driving it? Yeah. Have you paid for it? No. Are you driving it? Yeah. That's all I need. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? I'm making sense if you don't believe it. His father is still caring for him 23 years. If we, if we are in Jesus for 23 years, he cares for us. If we break away, he calls us back. If we stay with him forever... He meets our needs forever. He's our Heavenly Father. We are His offspring. So, where does sickness come from? Why are we afflicted? Look at where sickness comes from. Job chapter 
22. If you don't know where to find Job, look for Job. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Who came to God? Who came also? Who came to God? Children of God. Church members. Who also was in attendance? Satan. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And, his, and Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Every day, devil is not at rest. He's a homeless wanderer. He's looking for someone to give him his house to dwell. He goes from east to the west, from the north to the south. What is he looking for? Looking for who will give him room in the inn. Look at verse 7. I read it very loud. Everybody look at verse 7. Read it. When to go? I can't believe that my one voice will be louder than all of you. When to go? And so, when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, and he took him a first chair to scrap himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. Satan went forth, say that to everybody, and smote Job with sicknesses. Say it one more time. Satan went forth, and smote Job with sicknesses. Satan was the giver of boils and sicknesses to Job. Not God. Exodus. Exodus. It's not God that gives sickness, it's the devil. But it's God that heals. Someone say amen. amen. In the book of Exodus, the word of God says, He's the Lord that heals us. Hmm? You have your Bible? Let's look at it. Verse chapter, 20, chapter 15. Exodus 15, 26. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he led thee. Satan is the giver of sickness, and God is the healer of sickness. Do you understand that? Satan gave it, God healed it. Say that with me. Satan gives it, God heals it. Satan brought it, God took it away. Satan gave it, God took it away. Alright. What is God's part concerning our healing? My belief is that God is the one that heals his children. If you read the book of Deuteronomy and read all the Old Testament histories, you find that sickness came from the devil and God brought the cure. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Turn to your Bible. The 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Let's look at the fourth verse. 
This is Jesus before he was born. Prophet Isaiah saw this and said in verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. I didn't hear you. I'm one more time. I'm healed. Try it one more time. I'm healed. Okay. Now, if by his stripes we are healed, look at what Jesus came to do. Matthew chapter 8. In Australia, they say 8. 8. Matthew 8. Are you there? Matthew chapter 8. Beginning from the 14th verse. When Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. The 16th verse. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word, and healed all that were sick. Are you hearing that? Verse 17. Why? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. That is where we just read. The prophet say, Himself took, say that with me, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Say with me, He took and bare, He took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that? All right, listen to this. We went to the store today. Mama Ruth, come. We went to Max and Spencer today. I collected a few items that I bought. I gathered them in a basket. I brought my money out. U.S. dollars. 50. And Pastor Ruth said, that's not good here. She brought her money out. She, I got the goose. She paid the price. Hear this. They permitted me to carry the goose I didn't pay for. Everybody, this is a question to everybody. Why? This is a question to you. Why? I collected the goose. She paid for it. I took it and I didn't pay. I left. Why did they permit me to carry it away? <laughs> Question. Why did they allow me to carry it away? <laughs> Say loud, someone paid for it. Someone paid for it. What she paid for, do I have right to pay for it again? But do I have right to take it away? Yes. Why? Say loud, it's paid for. It's paid for. Try one more time. It's paid for. Do I have right to carry it? Yes. Did I steal it? No. Was I a thief? No. Does the thief belong to me? Yes. Now, why do I have it? Someone paid for it. At the cross of Calvary, Jesus paid for your sickness. Do you still have the right to carry it? No. Loud. No. Do you have right to bear it? No. Is one price enough? Yes. Say loud, yes. yes. <laughs> Are you a thief for being well? No. Are you a robber for being healthy? The person who paid for it, they did do good or not? Yes. 
Yes, Jesus dying on the cross is good for me. Why are we still sick if Christ bore it? Because we have not accepted the price. If when she paid, and I said to Dr. Festus, I don't know where we can get money. I don't know where we are going to have money. I don't know what to do. I have no money. And she says, I paid. I said, no, you haven't paid. I'm to pay. I have paid. No, you haven't paid. I don't pay. You are to pay. I have paid. You have not paid. I have paid. The goose seller will say, is he all right? (laughs) It's the same thing the devil says. When he sees children of God still sick and beaten down, he says, are they all right? They ought to know that their heavenly father paid. But now that they didn't know, I give them more. So he adds sickness to our sicknesses, diseases to our diseases, because he knows we are not aware the price is paid. But the day you discover what is wrong, and you write it by faith, you recover by your discovery. Somebody say hallelujah. When you find out that you are not supposed to be sick, you get up and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Why? Jesus was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace were laid on him, and by his stripes, I am healed. Somebody say loud, I'm healed. I'm healed. By what? By By what? By his stripes. How are you healed? By his stripes. He took, he himself took, say that loud. My infirmities and bear his own body. My sicknesses. Okay, Dr. Ru, you say those two things together. He took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses in his body. What he has borne, do you have right to bear it anymore? No. What he paid for, do you have right to pay for it the second time? No. Say no. Jesus taught the apostles this. Thank you, ma'am. He taught the apostles that he paid for their sins and paid for their sicknesses. And then he now called them to be against the devil. Let's look at what he did. Matthew 9, verse 32. Please listen to me carefully tonight. We are not in a religious service tonight. We are in the teaching of our rights in Christ. Verse 32. Read it very well. God is a healer. Say that loud. And Jesus is against the devil. Look at me, everybody. Put your eyes on me. Say it with me loud. God is a healer. healer. Jesus is against the devil. devil. Say the two things together. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Okay, look at verse 32, Matthew 9. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with what? Possessed with what? A devil. Let's see what Jesus did to it. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. Thank God that we have a church. Whether it is one out of one thousand that is healed, or one out of one million that is healed, there's a church where somebody is healed. I wish I was speaking English. I say I wish I was speaking English. Is that English? Whether it is only one person healed here a year, or two healed in six months, there's a healing place in England. Somebody should say Amen. amen. Devil possessed a man with dumbness. Jesus saw that dumbness. Verse 33, what did Jesus do to it? Rub the head and thank the devil for what he had done. Read me verse 33. One, two, go. Okay, look at what the religious people did. One, two, go, verse 34. But the Pharisees said, He casted out devils through the prince of the devils. Verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Religion will bind you, and religion will find fault. But God will do his job. I wish you heard what I said. Sometimes, when we hear people, if you know what people like, this professor, a university professor, a medical doctor, but for me in Benin, before, now, it, thank God for now, in Benin, when, when our church says, someone is raised from the dead, nobody argues anymore. When we say somebody is healed, nobody argues anymore. Why? Because they've seen the proof. There was a time when I said, somebody is healed, they say it's a lie. Somebody is born again, it's a lie. Somebody is saved, it's a lie. But now, even if somebody were not dead and they say he's raised, they are going to believe. <laughs> when I used to make effort to convince them that this is true, they say it's a lie. But now that they see it's true, it is true. Because you can't fight truth. Somebody say amen. Jesus did it. Look at chapter 10. He progressed. He was one doing it. Chapter 10. See whether that is in your Bible. Verse 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. To do what to unclean spirits? And to heal all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease. In the hospital, the teaching hospital, where this man had been a medical doctor and senior doctor, all that physician see him lay hand on the sick head. He does not only believe in injecting and medicating, if that is the correct word in medicine. He also lays hand and says to sickness, the subject to what sickness? The one that he believes is very serious, he prays. The one that is minor, he gives injection. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why does he merge the two? Because prayer is more powerful than medicine. I wish somebody heard what I'm saying. Whether you believe it or not, God is the healer. Doctors give treatment, God's healing. I believe in medicine, but I believe that medicine without God is not right. Doctors treat, God heals. Doctors 
show concern, but God gives a cure. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe in medicine. Jesus saw the dumb man. He cast out the devil. Immediately the devil came out. The dumb spoke. As long as the devil was there, the man was dumb. But when the devil came out, the man spoke. So what was possessing the man was a dumb spirit. When the spirit comes out, the liberty is given for expression. When the spirit stays there, the dumbness is there. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm sure I'm not giving you too much to swallow tonight. As long as that dumb spirit is there, you are going to be dummy. You don't think right, you don't behave well. Lawyers will say that's a mischievous spirit. But doctors will say that is a disease. And pastors will say that needs to come out. That's why we are here. You, doc, you lawyer accuse him. Doctor, you treat him. Me cast him out. Trinity. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Secret is causing offense. So we put it to him like he's in the wrong house. Then the doctor bring knife to cut it. Then the pastor bring mouth to chase him out. Three ways. We must not in any form take devil for granted that he's a good friend. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus now called 12 men and said, you saw what I did. Now I give you power against unclean spirit. To do what? To cast them out. Mm. Alright. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 3. The third chapter of Mark. Your part and God's part. This is Jesus' part concerning sickness and demons. Okay, we we'll start from verse 9 of Mark chapter 3. He spake unto his disciples that a small sheep should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should trunk him. Verse 10. Are you there, Mark chapter 3? Is somebody following what I'm reading tonight? Verse 10. For he had healed many in so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him. As many as had plagues. Verse 11. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. In the Bible, Dr. Reed, I taught this one in Australia. The only time people fell in the, in the Bible was when they have unclean spirit. But modern preachers, even when you are standing, they send you on the floor. Oh Lord, they didn't follow what I'm saying. Look at verse, what verse is that? Verse 11. Read it very well. Those of you who think you are falling under anointing, see why you are falling. Occasionally. Occasionally. Sometimes, some people, not everyone. Read verse 11. One to go. I was telling them in Australia, the only time people fell in the Bible were when they have unclean spirit. But nowadays, it's a habit. We want to show people that we are under spirit, we are spirit possessors. So everyone that comes before us must fall. Let's see what Jesus did to the people who fell. Verse 12. Verse 12. Read your Bible. Come on loud. Verse 13. Verse 14. He ordained 12. That they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Verse 15. And to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devil. Do you see that? Jesus is not praising demon spirits in any form. Those who fell with unclean spirits, he did not ordain them. Somebody should say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is tough for you, but this is good. 
Because I hear some of you running, not, not, not any of you here, but every time Christian here, a preacher with fallen spirit gift has come to town, everybody rush. Even when he has not come near them, boom, boom. Brother, how was the service? I fell. How long were you on the floor? Three hours. What were you doing? Drinking. Peter told them in Australia, no fish that have lived in ocean for 10 years would be jumping when you see shower. You didn't hear what I said. If fish come to the shore and see some rain falling, does the fish begin to jump? Hallelujah, there's rain. Does it? Why? It's accustomed to water. The reason many of you jump when you go to London, when you see people falling down, because you have not been used to... Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Reese, I shouldn't say that. Okay, I should say it. The reason many people are jumping when they see shower is because they've never been to the sea. If you were inside water and rain is falling, chakaka, shaya, sha. You don't say, hallelujah, if you were inside the sea. But if you have never seen water before, you are going to jump. How many hours? Three. But the fish live in the sea for life. So if you are boasting of three hours under the spirit, because you are not used to water. I wish somebody heard what I said. You say somebody came. I was in the spirit for three days. The fish say, I've been in the water for 20 years. Verse 14. Read it. One to go. Verse 15. Say with me, I have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Shout hallelujah. Where are we here tonight to receive power to cast out devils? Look at another thing he did for the twelve. Look at look chapter nine. If you don't know where to find Luke, look. Chapter nine of Luke's gospel. Verse one and two. Listen again while we are here. Then he called his twelve disciples together. Is that in your Bible? Now let's read it together. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Say cure. cure. Diseases. diseases. Now what did he do to the twelve he called? He called them to do what for them? Give them power. To do what? To cast out and to heal. Say I'm a devil caster. And a healer. Say it loud. I'm a devil caster. I'm a devil caster. And, a and a healer. All right. Verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. And to heal the sick. Why do we gather here? So we can take ourselves from slavery mentality. Constantly sick. Always wanting to be healed. It's time for us to stop looking for who we heal us and look for who to heal. The spirit of religion teach you to subject. And the spirit of Christ teach you freedom and liberty to be well. For by his stripes I'm what? By his stripes. He wounded. He was bruised. By his stripes I'm healed. Okay, anybody sick tonight that is still on the wheelchair must not wait for me because I'm not going to pray for you. Chapter 10. If you get up, you'll be well. Look at what he told the disciples. Verse 8. Chapter 10, verse 8. Message to the disciples. And into whatsoever city ye enter, 
and they receive you. Eat such things as I have said before you. Verse 9. Heal the sick that are daring, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto who? You. Why is the kingdom come? Because there's healing in the kingdom. Verse 19 of the same chapter. Oh God. Behold. I didn't hear you. Somebody shout yes. yes. Nothing shall by any means hurt who? Me. I didn't hear you. Say me. me. Stand to your face. Say nothing. No. Shall, shall. By, by any means, any means. hurt me. Nothing shall buy any. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. getting it is somebody getting that okay now that is god the healer jesus the healer apostles the commissioned to heal is that in your bible matthew 12 or i look at from verse 10 of matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 12 begin from verse 10 and behold there was a man which had his hand withered and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? He said unto them, Look at that, look at that. What man shall there be among you that we shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the sabbath days then said they then said he to the man set forth thy hand and he set it forth and it was restored whole like as the other 
verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him for healing a withered hand. Verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitude followed him, and he healed them. How many? I say, how many? I say, how many? I say, how many? Oh. Oh. Look at Luke chapter 4. Oh, we are making progress. I like this. Yeah, where you think they are getting anything? All right. Chapter 4. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Every time Jesus saw sickness, Dr. Reed, he was against it. Every time Peter, he saw devil, he was against him. Why should we be the one buying body lotion to rob the devil when he comes to our house? Why should we buy perfume to spray him and welcome him to our room? Jesus was against it and he's teaching the disciples to be against it. Look at this verse. 38 of Luke 4. He arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. That's a different message. I will preach it here one day. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And he left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. But 40. Now, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases, brought them unto him and he laid his hands on every one of them and did what and did what and did what chapter 6 look chapter 6 of Luke's gospel Mm -hmm. look at these verses verse 17 Verse 17, read with me. One to go. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. We come to the house of God to be healed. We come to Christ to be healed. We are to be victors and not victims. Constantly. Whenever you come with sickness, don't take it away. The word I'm emphasizing here tonight, they came to be healed, not to watch. Many come to watch. I was told you can heal, so here am I. Do it and let me go. You understand me? I have five minutes to be here. If you're not going to do it, I'm going now. Okay? Are you ready? Do it. Come on. I say, heal me. A man who behaved like that did not come to be healed. He came to query. And he'll go back with his sickness. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? An inquirer gets answer. A querier gets more queries. Oh, God. What verse are we next? 18. One to go. And they that were vexed with unclean spirit, and they were healed. Verse 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, but they went virtue out of him and healed them all. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Matthew 14:34. When they were gone over, they came into the land of Genesaret. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Verse 35. When the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were what? Diseases. Enquirer will become a receiver. If you desire to be healed, you can be healed. Verse 36, thank God for this. And 
besought him that they might only do what? Touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made perfectly whole. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, that was the disciples. Now let's see Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Now look at the verse I want us to read. Beginning from the 12th verse. Listen to this. And by the hands of the apostles, say with my hands, where many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Verse 13. And of the rest, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Verse 14. And believers, come on, say it loud. We are the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both men and women. Is that in your Bible? Then verse 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on bed and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing the sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, everyone, by Peter. God did this, the apostles are now doing it. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Everybody, this is your turn now. Say with me, God did it. God did it. Jesus did it. The apostle did it. Apostle did now it's my turn. Now it's my Verse 17. One to go. Signs shall follow them that pass. Are you a believer? Yes. What is going to follow you from now? Yes. Look at the next line. In my name shall they cast out devils. Say I'm a devil caster. Yes. They shall speak with new tongues. Say I can speak with new tongues. Yes. Maybe some of you don't believe in that, but it's very important. Everybody who is a born again Christian must speak in tongues. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Good. Look at the next verse. Now we read verse 17 again. These signs shall follow them that believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. This sign shall follow me. Follow. Jesus said, In my name shall they cast out devil. Say his name. His name. I, shall I shall cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongues. Tongue. Say, That is good for me. Verse 18. They shall take up serpent. It's in your Bible. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Who is Jesus talking about? Say, I. Start with me again. God did it. Jesus did it. Apostle did it. I'm a, I'm a believer. Now it's my turn. Look at what believers did. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. This is not to the twelve. It's to the believer. And they went forth. Say, I will go forth. Will go forth. Everywhere. Say, I will preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Say, God will walk with me. And confirming the word with signs. Following me. me. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at what Paul says here. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Say, I will preach today with power and authority and wisdom of God. Hallelujah. How many of you want God to be using you from today? Come forward. All who want God to be using them from today, come forward. All of you want God to start to use you to become healer and not the sick. 
to become loser and not the bound, come forward. Jesus, Lord of mercy. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services. Iwo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. One of the greatest lesson I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution. No problem is too big for God to solve and none is too small for him to pay attention. God does not reward our good with people. When we do something good in his name, when we do something good for him, he doesn't say, because thou hast so served me, thou payest thy tithe, thou givest thy offering, therefore shalt thou be in trouble. God is not like that. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say amen. Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecies thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. me most in Christianity was the inability for people to have a will to live. They accepted everything the devil brought their way as if it didn't matter. He gave them power against. It's not enough to come to church and rattle with your tongue do something with the power that Jesus gave you if you are going to preach the gospel don't imitate any man that failed don't be too humble to look like a man who failed look for a man who has succeeded the only man who will criticize you and you listen or you or you in your life is the man that have done twice what you are trying to do once the only person when he criticizes you and you say listen is the person that have done twice what you are trying to do once so when Jesus called the first 12 disciples I love the place he said and when he had called the 12 he gave them power against. Not powerful, 
but against power against all unclean spirit this message and a collection of other messages are available at Iwo Media Services Iwo Media Services inspirational world class production And listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith.
spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, 
we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. 
Then daddy said or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there. Uh, Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day but he arrived late so they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house.
What's up, boo? Monkey, what's your boo? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, wait till I talk! Again! Again, again! Hey! Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl name? I say it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, about three hours later, my father come, my late Ben in the house. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in, uh, ordinary native daughter tried they can't raise her back to life. Said where is her now? He said she swam in there. Said he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room.
then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered my fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, oh, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. 
I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guys and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938, to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, Bens young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself, and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 
1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop of, Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert. Uh, university in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife Margaret Idaosa were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism Our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attracted upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop. Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa's evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. 
He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard-working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable qu quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. 
His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include faith, metaplex, all nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.